Well, let's say that this change is a minus. Would this change be positive or minus? It's going to be positive. And how about this one? Positive. All right. And let's say that this change is point 0.4 molar. If this change is point 0.4 molar, what would this change be? Let's stop and think about that a little bit. No, no, no. Just going to write down that. Okay, take your time. Let's talk about that. No? Isn't that when it's a, it's equilibrium we use X's? Uh, it's true that sometimes we need X's. Well, in equilibrium you sometimes need X's, but we don't need any X's here because I told you this number. Mm -hmm. Because once you know, so here's the key. Once you know one of the changes, you should be able to figure out all the other changes. So if you know this, you shouldn't need any X's. Let's take this step by step. Suppose that, I, uh, suppose that I reacted one mole of this salt. If I reacted one mole of this salt, how many moles of calcium would that make? Not one. Three, not one. Three. And if I reacted one mole of this salt, how many moles of phosphate would that make? Two, not one, and not X. So you, don't, you didn't need to say X, right? If I tell you that I've used up one mole of this, you know exactly how much of this we've made and exactly how much of this. Um, suppose that I used up two moles of this. If I used up two moles of this, how many moles of this do you think I would make? Six. Good, and how many moles of this? Four. Okay, that's what these coefficients mean. The coefficients mean every time we use one of these, we make three of these and two of these. So if I used up three of these, how many moles of this would I make? Three times as much, and how many moles of this? Six. Yeah, that's right. How about if I used up X of these? If I use up X of these, how many of these will I make? Three X. Three X. Three times as much, and how many moles of this? So this is the only time when I need an X. Well, now, if you don't know the starting yeah, if you don't actually know how much this change is, then you've got to use an X. Well, in this case, we used up 0.4 molar of the salt. So we need multiply by 3.4 right. and uh, 2 by, by 0.4. Good. So let's go ahead and do those calculations. So what these so notice that the coefficients don't really tell us directly about the start or the end. The coefficients tell us about the changes. And what the coefficients tell us is that this change should be three times bigger than this change. Okay. And they tell us that this change should be two times bigger than this change. Or they tell us that this change should be one third as big as this one. Okay. And this change should be one half as big as this one. The coefficients tell us about the changes. Okay. So if you know one of the changes, you can always find the other changes by using the coefficients. That's not just true for solubility, that's true for any ice table. Okay. Acids and bases or whatever type of reaction you're doing. Redox reactions, any type of reaction. If you know one of the changes, you can use the coefficients to find the other change. But okay. unfortunately, most students don't realize that. What can these coefficients refer to? 
Well, we usually use these to refer to moles, but they can also refer to molarity. So it's perfectly good to use molarity here. This could mean one molar forms three molar and then two molar. But they can't mean grams. We can't use grams here. So we, um, these could not refer to grams. So if you're working with grams, you would have to convert it into molarity before you could actually use the ice table and before you can use the coefficients. Okay, um, now it, maybe it's good to, to see a, a slightly different way of putting this here as a unit conversion. We have 0.4 molar calcium phosphate, right? And we wanted to figure out how much calcium ions. We wanted to figure out the molarity of calcium ions we were going to get. Well, we can do that as a unit conversion. So here's the conversion ratio that we're going to need. Um, why did I put calcium phosphate on the bottom? Because I wanted that to cancel with this. And why did I put molar calcium on the top? Because I wanted to make this. So we need three on top, three moles of calcium right. plus, and uh, we'll get um, one. And what number do we put on the bottom? Oh, uh, on the bottom is going to be one, because right. it's only one mole. Good. And it's going to be... 1.2. Yeah, now we do 3 times 0.4, and that would give us 1.2 molar again. Mm -hmm. So that's the more formal way to do what we'd already done a little bit by common sense. Uh, so if you're not sure how to find the changes, you can always do them by unit conversion. Okay. So the key is the stoichiometric coefficients give you conversion ratios. The stoichiometric coefficients give you conversion ratios. So the point is, once you know one of the changes, you can convert that into any of the other changes by using the stoichiometric coefficients to get a conversion ratio. Once you know one of the changes, you can find any of the other changes by using the stoichiometric coefficients to find a conversion ratio. Good. How did I know that I needed to put the calcium phosphate on the bottom here because I wanted that to cancel with these units? Yeah, and I needed to put this up here to get these units. I think that's making sense to you. And how did I know to put the two on the top? Because two goes with phosphate and one goes with this. All right, and once again, we would get that this is 0.8, just like we figured out before a little bit more loosely. All right, now actually, I, I don't think you should have to do these this way every time. Um, I think you should just be able to say, it's obvious that this change should be three times bigger than this change. And it's obvious that this change should be twice as big as this one.